good evening to all myself dr naresh kulkarni feel privileged to welcome you all on international women days webinar series today is webinar one that is webinar first it gives me immense pleasure to welcome dr meera sakre ma'am who is today's eminent speaker in our alembic ecve platform that an e learning platform for the field veterinarian also i would like to welcome dr surbhi ma'am for joining this webinar last but not the least i would like to welcome all fellow veterinarians academicians ugpg student your presence makes us very happy now i would like to hand over this session to dr santosh shinde sir for further proceedings thank you thank you dr naresh it is my privilege and honor to welcome today's eminent speaker dr meera p sakre dr surbhi ma'am as a panelist and all the participating veterinarians alembic ecv the e learning platform for field veterinarians is under continuous support motivation and guidance from mr p karuna vidhi who is senior vice president alembic pharmaceutical limited regarding today's speaker she is my batchmate dr meera p sakre msc phd in veterinary medicine she is working as assistant professor department of preventive veterinary medicine goas parbani system center mapsu nagpur regarding meera p sakre she is energetic distinguished clinician excellent researcher and eminent extension worker from last 14 years meera p sakre hold special interest in small ruminant medicine that is sheep goat medicine Meera P. Sakre did her graduation in 2004 and uh, post graduation in veterinary medicine in 2006 from College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Parbani, Mapsu Nagpur, and PhD in 2018 from Nagpur Veterinary College. She started her career as a, a livestock development officer in Department of Animal Husbandry, Government of Maharashtra in 2007. Her keen interest of teaching. A research and extension work made her to join Mapsu as an assistant professor in Department of Preventive Veterinary Medicine in Goa, Sudhir. Regard regarding the award on um, award and recognition, she is recipient of several prestigious awards. She is recipient of eight national awards, best research presentation award for PhD research in ISBM. 2020 recently she has received two award one is inspiring lady veterinary award on occasion of international women women day 2021 and audesh kumar singh memorial award 2021 regarding clinic uh, clinical and extension activity she simplified and standardized standardized alternative treatment protocol in small and large animal dermatological cases she has organized 29 national state level training webinar for field veterinarian pet practitioner goat and sheep owner she organized one unique training program that is called health, health management of dog for dog trainer and handler for cid department department of maharashtra state she has a resource person for 12 national webinar during covid pandemic regarding her publication Following publication is her under her credit. That is, she has published forty-one research article in national and international journals. She wrote fifteen technical article and fifty-eight popular article. She has delivered ten radio talk. She has created ten folder leaflet and booklet for farmer community. She has delivered fifty-two uh, lectures for the as a resource person for field veterinarian. Top supervisor and pet owner. She has conducted thirty-two animal health camp. She is a member. She is a life member of ISBM, ISSCPU, IAVD, VIPM, and Lava Tamil Nadu. These are some of the activities of Dr. Meera P. Sakare. Now I request Dr. Meera P. Sakare to start. thank you uh, so good evening to all respected teachers my senior faculty members colleagues uh, dear students 
So I welcome on the behalf of Alumni Pharmaceutical on this platform for this webinar series. So first I would like to thank our uh, administrator, Dr. Uh, Honorable uh, Patrukar sir, Vice Chancellor of Maharashtra Animal and Fishery Sciences University, Nagpur, for giving permission for this webinar. Also, Director of Instruction, Director of Research, Director of Extension, and our Associate Dean, Dr. Markande Sir, uh, Povas Parbani, for the permission of this webinar. So, on the occasion of International Women's Day 2022, Olympic Pharmaceutical, they have started uh, a webinar series, especially for the uh, lady veterinarians. So I would like to thank to uh, Mr. Karuna Nidhi, Senior Vice President of Alumni Pharmaceutical, uh, Dr. Santosh Inde, sir. Uh, he is my batchmate and uh, also he has given a very nice introduction. Uh, Dr. Uh, Naresh Kulkarni, sir, uh, entire team of Alumni Pharmaceutical, one and all. I welcome to all of you. So today I'm going to uh, present or discuss on common bovine clinical diseases case discussion. So in this presentation, I have included uh, the cases, 15 to 20 uh, cases, and which are more focusing on the uh, uh, typically diagnostic point of view, typical clinical signs, differential diagnosis, and the treatment protocol, which is followed in the different cases. So in these uh, uh, cases, so most of the field veterinarians, they might have been attended some cases or some uh, cases, they have been new for them. So, especially for the students. So, we will start one by one. So, first case, it is the uh, one uh, bullock, red kandari bullock, which is uh, having four year age group. And with the history of complete anorexia, there is a bilateral swelling of the mandible, there is a dullness, depression. And this bullock, it is having difficulty in the respiration. So, this case, it is presented in our clinic. So here in this picture, we can see there is a hard swelling on the mandible. There is a bilateral symmetrical swelling on the mandible in red kandari bullock. So on the basis of physical and uh, tentative uh, clinical examination, we have diagnosed this case as a actinomycosis. So this actinomycosis, which is commonly known as lumpija or anything osteomyelitis, and it is caused due to this gram-positive bacterium that is actinomyces ovis. So when these bacteria, they are normally present in the oral cavity or in the GI tract of the animal. But whenever there is any wound through the food or any trauma to the mouth cavity, it will occur. So at that time, these bacteria, they start to multiply rapidly. And these bacteria, they are having special affinity for the bony tissue, especially the mandible. And after invasion, this bacteria, it causes a granulomatous mass and which we can visible in this previous picture. And uh, due to the involvement of bone, there is a uh, draining sinus or accumulation of pus in the mandible we can see. And uh, there is a discharge from the tract. So there is a thick mucoid alloy purulent discharge we can see after the maturation of that particular growth. And such animals, they are having difficulty while uh, taking food as well as uh, even the water intake. And uh, after uh, uh, examination, there is a foul smelling. Due to the purulent material, such animals, they are having foul smelling on the breath. And uh, this is a chronic disease. Actinomycosis, it is a chronic disease. And in this case, day by day, health of the animal, it has been deteriorated one. So general health of the animal, it has been affected in such type of cases. So in uh, this picture, so this picture uh, on the day of presentation or before treatment. So here we can see the uh, hard bony involvement of the mandible due to this actinomycus organism. So in this uh, case, uh, we have given the treatment. So after confirmation of this uh, disease, we go to the specific treatment. So in actinomycosis, uh, there are uh, iodide, that is potassium iodide or sodium iodide. Both options it can be given. But in this case, we have given potassium iodide at the dose rate of 8 gram daily orally for the 10 days or alternatively we can give sodium iodide at the dose rate of 70 milligram per kg body weight as a 10 percent or 20 percent solution by intravenous route in the normal saline or 1 gram roughly by uh, per 12 kg body weight of the animal so uh, uh, 
Among this potassium and sodium iodide, this potassium iodide, it is the safest drug of choice. Because many times whenever we are giving uh, the sodium iodide through intravenous route, so reaction it can be occurred or there is a toxicity it can be observed. So this potassium iodide orally, it is having very good result. And this treatment, it should be continued till the signs of iodism develop. So iodine toxicity, it should be developed in the body of animal. So whenever there is a reach in the plasma level of this iodine, so at that time, there is a parasympathomimetic uh, action, it will be occur. And there is a lacrimation, nasal discharge, dandruff, respiratory distress or anorexia, such type of parasympathomimetic type of symptoms we can see. And at that time, whenever there is a toxicity it is developed, so at that time, we have to discontinue that potassium iodide. So till uh, recovery or till the signs of iodism development, we can continue the potassium iodide. So these are toxicity it is only for a temporary period. Once we have withdraw that drug, automatically there is a normal uh, behavior of the animal we can see. In addition, fluid therapy, because in such a chronic type of cases, animals, they are not taking any food material. So dextrous 5% or ringer's lactate, we can give according to the body weight of animal. And uh, this disease, it is caused by the streptopenicillin, uh, uh, this gram-positive organism. So penicillin, it is the correct drug of choice. So streptopenicillin, uh, 5 gram intramuscular, we can give for a period of 5 to 7 days. It is a chronic disease, so minimum one week treatment is essential. And then flunixin meglumide, that is NSAID drug. So this drug, it is very good one and it is having good effect in uh, whenever there is an involvement of hard bony tissue, it is there. So this flunixin, it can be given at the dose rate of 1.1 milligram per kg body weight by intramuscular route. And most uh, important in the treatment aspect, so surgical drainage of that abscess it is essential one. So many times when the cases they are presented, so animals they are having the hard swelling. And after that hard swelling, there is no any discharge we can see. So for the maturation of that uh, abscess, we have to apply uh, this magnesium sulfate uh, uh, this ointment or iodex ointment, which is available in the market. So within uh, three to four days, there is a maturation of abscess. It is there and surgically we have to drain that cavity. So because once we have to remove that uh, uh, purulent or uh, material from that cavity, then and then only there is a uh, decrease in the infection it can be occurred. So uh, first you have to mature the abscess with the help of magnesium sulfate and then there is a surgical drainage. And uh, in uh, some cases, uh, we have to give the small stab incision. And after stab incision, uh, you have to uh, <clears throat> flush that cavity with the help of 1% uh, this uh, potassium permanganate solution. And you can put uh, this tincture iodine gauze uh, in our povidine iodine gauze in that particular cavity. And daily dressing for a period of three to four weeks, uh, three to four days, according to the condition or according to the recovery, we can give the treatment. So this pro treatment protocol, it is essential in case of the actinomycosis. So potassium iodide orally, and there is a surgical drainage of that cavity. And along with the supportive antibiotic streptopenicillin and flunixin meglubine. So after giving treatment, so this is the photograph after the uh, second day of the treatment. So on first day, there is a, a hard bony swelling. It is there. There is no maturation of swelling. Only we have given potassium iodide. So after maturation of that abscess or draining of that uh, particular uh, growth, so there is a reduction in the swelling we have seen. So in this picture, we can see there is a reduction in the swelling. Uh, <clears throat> So here in this uh, picture, we can see clear cut. Uh, so this uh, photograph on the fifth day of treatment. So immediately after, after draining of that particular first material, animals, they are getting relief. So this is the photograph after complete recovery. So near about uh, seven days or 10 days treatment, it is essential in case of the actinomycosis. So, so this is the after treatment uh, video. So in this, uh, uh, video, we can appreciate uh, there is a normal behavior of this uh, bullock. There is a drying uh, muzzle, it becomes moist one, as well as uh, there is a movement of tongue, it is there. Animals, they try to uh, lick uh, their muzzle or around the mouth cavity. They are ruminating one. And uh, this uh, case, it has been recovered within a period of seven to 10 days. 
so whenever there is a swelling on the mandible so at that time at field level we have to differentiate the different diseases which are having the similar uh, signs or symptoms so first one is the actinobacillosis so in actinobacillosis uh, this is caused by the gram negative organism and in this uh, actinobacillosis there is a hard swelling of the tongue it is there. So there is a diffuse hard swelling of the tongue. There is a uh, open mouth breathing. Sometimes there is a protrusion of tongue. It is there, and there is a uh, enlargement of the uh, this uh, facial uh, lymph nodes. So in a actinobacillosis, same treatment it is given. So sodium iodide intravenous route or potassium iodide by the uh, oral route. So such type of uh, treatment we can follow in case of the actinobacillosis. So in actinobacillosis, lesions they are restricted to the tongue of animal. Then second, it is the uh, uh, traumatic reticular peritonitis. So most of the time there is a brisket edema. So in case of TRP, there is no any uh, uh, swelling at the mandibular lesion. But animals they are swelling, uh, having swelling at the brisket uh, TRP. That is traumatic reticular peritonitis. So in this we can see there is an inflammatory swelling on the brisket region or at the tulip we can see. And in this case there is a jugular engorgement is there. So positive venous test we can see our uh, tucked up body condition. Animals they are having pain while sitting while standing. And after radiographic examination, we can see the foreign body in the at the reticular rumen. So say, second, it is the hypoproteinemia. So hypoproteinemia it can be occur in any disease condition uh, or uh, mostly in case of the paraempistomiasis. So in paraempistomiasis, uh, mostly diarrhea it is prominent one, and this swelling it is soft fluctuating swelling uh, at the mandible we can see. Uh, then uh, next uh, uh, it is the snake bite. So in case of snake bite, uh, whenever snake bite it will uh, bite, it will occur to the facial region or the foreleg of the animal. So at that time, fang mark we can see or there is a bleeding tendency we can see. So most of the time if the animal it is having the black color coat. So in that case a fang mark we cannot uh, see uh, vi vi visible properly. Uh, so in this case, we can go for the uh, these uh, progressive edematous swelling, uh, which is started from the anterior to the posterior, and it is there. And uh, uh, for the proper uh, confirmatory diagnosis, we can go for the blood clotting time. So in case of snake bite, blood clotting time it is more than seven uh, minute. And uh, uh, animals they are giving proper response for the anti snake venom serum. Uh, then uh, next it is the hemorrhagic septicemia. So this uh, HS, it is a bacterial disease which is mostly found in case of the buffalo and uh, whenever there is a stress condition it is there uh, or uh, any change in the environment of the animal it is there. So at that time such cases we can see. So in a, uh, HS it is the acute disease and within a, a short period of time without treatment death of the animal we can see. And in such cases, there is a snoring type of respiration. If we are standing near the uh, animal, so in that case, we can see there is a uh, snoring type of respiration animals they are having. And after giving this oxytetracycline or uh, this penicillin, animals they are giving the risk. Whereas in ectosis, this only disease and which will take more time for the recovery purpose. Then uh, nowadays, uh, in last two years, we have faced about this lumpy skin disease. So in lumpy skin disease, in the initially, there is a nodular type of lesions we have uh, seen in uh, most of the animals. There is a high rise of body temperature, uh, nodular lesions are there. And uh, after giving symptomatic treatment, animals, they are having the recovery. But in uh, lateral uh, stages or after some uh, uh, four to six months, so these LSD cases, they have been presented with the edematous swelling. So all these photographs, they are having the edematous swelling. So at the brisket region, edematous swelling. Uh, and uh, in some animal, only one leg, uh, four leg, one hand leg, it can be. Uh, some, in some cases, the brisket edema along with the skin nodules. So in case of LSD, along with the skin nodules, we can see uh, there is a edematous uh, swelling. It is there. Uh, and uh, these virus, they are having capacity to affect all layers of the skin. And it is chronic one. And uh, uh, these uh, skin lesions, it can be recovered after a month or two month period. And by giving symptomatic treatment, we, can, we have seen the uh, proper recovery. So again, these are the photograph of LSD. Uh, so in uh, some cases, there is a, in nostril, there is a blood tinge. Uh, <clears throat> 
discharge we can form there is a scar formation in a some animal there is edematous inflammatory swelling on the head region we can also see in this case nsaid and proper uh, the symptomatic treatment it is effective one uh, while in some cases they are having uh, <coughs> respiratory distress so uh, in this bullock we can see uh, there is a huge edematous swelling it is there this is the killer bullock which is presented with lsd and uh, which is having edematous swelling on the brisket region, villa region, uh, and uh, near about whole body it is edematous one. While in actinomycosis only uh, this uh, swelling it is restricted to the mandible or face region of the animal. So we have to uh, consider uh, LSD also for the differential diagnosis of this uh, lumpus, uh, this uh, actinomycosis. So next, this is it is subcutaneous emphysema. So most of the time, due to the faulty drenching or uh, due to the accumulation of air in the interstitial space in the peritoneum or in the thoracic cavity, there is a uh, puffy skin uh, we can see. And after palpation of such animals, uh, we found the air, accumulation of air. And uh, in subcutaneous emphysema, uh, mostly uh, the prognosis, it is unfavorable one. And once we have started the treatment in the early cases, animals will give the a good response. So this is the bullock uh, in which we can see this uh, whole body uh, it is having uh, accumulated air. And after uh, simply after palpation of uh, this uh, uh, area, we can see the uh, <coughs> this uh, crepitant or uh, uh, air which is accumulated in the skin of animal. So in such cases, uh, we have to go for the uh, antibiotic like Cepio4, Xcept or Mcept drug along with the frusemide and NSAID drug animals, they will give the response. So generally fluid therapy it is restricted in uh, such cases. So next it is aspiration pneumonia. So due to the faulty uh, drenching of the medicine or any oil or any solution or uh, due to the wrong uh, insertion of the stomach tube, so animals, uh, they can have the aspiration pneumonia. And uh, in these cases, there is an extension of the head, a nasal discharge, coughing, and animals, they are having pain. So generally, abdominal type of respiration, uh, it is observed. Because in aspiration pneumonia, there is a consolidation of the lung, it is there. And animals, they are having severe respiratory distress. So such cases, it has been treated with the help of frusemide, uh, this XF, as well as uh, with the antihistaminic and generally fluid therapy it is contraindicated. Then the next case, uh, this is the second uh, case, uh, this is uh, a Devni uh, calf, it is there. So this Devni calf, which is having 15 days old male animal, uh, which is presented with lateral recumbency, uh, having incoordination, there is a continuous rotation of the head and there is a struggling movements are there. So this is the day old uh, Devni calf. So this calf, it is having uh, symptoms from the birth. So immediately after birth, it started uh, such type of symptom. So on the basis of uh, clinical examination and uh, uh, this uh, case, it has been diagnosed as a hypovitaminosis due to the deficiency of vitamin A. So this is a hypovitaminosis. <laughs> So here in this uh, video, we can clear cut see there is a continuous rotation of the head. Circular uh, or paddling movements are also there. So rotation of head along with the paddling movement and uh, in coordination, paraplegia, our animals cannot move properly. So this is the day old Devni calf and uh, which is suffering with the hypovitaminosis. So this uh, vitamin uh, deficiency, it can be occur uh, as a primary disease or secondary disease. So primary disease, it is uh, due to the uh, dietary deficiency of vitamin D or its precursor that is carotene. So animals, they are generally getting this vitamin A from the green fodder. But in case of the pregnant animal, uh, this vitamin A, uh, they are not transferring or they are not crossing the placenta barrier. And uh, these, whatever the uh, new, newly born calf are there, they are the deficiency of vitamin A. And uh, such animals, they are developing the symptoms. And uh, in case of the adult animal, night blindness or some gynecological infertility, night blindness, uh, such problems we can face. Uh, uh, in case of the adult animal, this vitamin A it can be very well stored in the liver and there is no any deficiency it will occur. Because uh, storage of vitamin A, uh, it is for longer duration, for one month to up to three months, there is a 
strong storage of vitamin A in the animals due to the unable to cross the vitamin A through the placenta. Animals, such animals, they are facing the vitamin A deficiency. Not in all animals, but such uh, some cases it has been facing. So in such cases, there is an incoordination, rotation of head, there is a convulsion, and finally syncope or blindness it has been occurred. So uh, in case of the vitamin A deficiency, there is an increase uh, uh, this cerebral spinal fluid or increase intracranial pressure. It is there, and due to that, such animals uh, they are heavy. Uh, this convulsion or struggling movement and incoordination, ataxia, these symptoms we can form due to the increased CSF or uh, there is increased intracranial pressure. And due to the damage of the peripheral uh, nerve roots, there is incoordination, especially the handling uh, uh, weakness, it is more common in vitamin A deficiency. As compared to the four limbs, they are um, uh, mostly affected more. And uh, in treatment, this vitamin A, uh, which is in the aqueous form, so not in the oily form. So because this oily form, there is a with the unsaturated fatty acid, it is, with, uh, it is there and animals cannot get the vitamin A properly. So we have to uh, give aqueous form, water-soluble form of vitamin A, like uh, preparin fort or any intravita injection, it is available. So 2 ml um, uh, injection, it is given and... Uh, for a period of two to three days. So at the dose rate of 440 international unit per kg body weight by uh, intramuscular rule. So in addition, we can also give manitol, uh, <clears throat> which is the asthmotic diuretic. So to reduce the intracranial pressure along with the normal saline, we have to give the manitol. Uh, <clears throat> so this treatment, it is given in this animal. And uh, this animal, uh, they have, uh, after treatment uh, in initial period, uh, this uh, calf, they have start to walk. So in this photo, uh, so this photograph after three, uh, three days of the treatment and owner, they have kept uh, uh, their calf for a proper, uh, uh, or they are giving support to their calf. So in this case, uh, this uh, animal owner, they have uh, taken a lot care, uh, nearly for two to three months, uh, they have uh, taken proper care, there is a proper massage or whatever the treatment uh, uh, which is uh, suggested, they have followed. And uh, near about one month, it is required for a proper uh, gait of the animal. So gait of the animal, it has been uh, resumed after a period of one to two months. So this is the photograph after the uh, three months of the treatment. So this owner, they have sent the photograph after the three months of the treatment. The next case, it is the uh, buffalo calf, which is uh, a having age uh, four month old, non descript female animal, and uh, which is presented with later recumbency. They are unable to stand. Again, there is a rotation of head, convulsion, and struggling movement. So, same uh, signs which I have discussed in previous case, uh, that uh, sign they have been same in this case. And uh, this case, it has been tentatively diagnosed as hypomagnesemia. Uh, because in uh, hypomagnesemia, uh, uh, this magnesium, it is naturally deficient in the milk of animal through the co colostrum. And uh, uh, we can differentiate this hypovitaminosis and hypomagnesemia. So hypovitaminosis, uh, it is uh, generally occurring in the day old uh, calf immediately after the uh, parturition. While this uh, hypovitaminosis, it is a rapidly growing uh, calf, it is more common. After a period of three or four months, we can see the symptoms of this hypomagnesemia. So this, uh, uh, in this buffalo calf, we can see, so there is a continuous uh, struggling movement are there, uh, there is a paddling movement and animals, uh, they are having the uh, rotation head. So there is a paddling movement, it is more common uh, in case of the, uh, this hypomagnesemia. So on the basis of uh, tentative uh, clinical examination and uh, symptoms, we have diagnosed as a hypomagnesemia. So these are uh, in hypomagnesemia, hyperesthesia. So hyperesthesia, there is increase in the stimulus to the external, uh, any sunlight or any uh, brightness, it is there. And uh, opistotonus, uh, there is a uh, rigidity of the neck, it is there. Animal cannot walk properly. Animal, they are having difficulty in the walking. There is a rotation of head, struggling movement, trimal limb stiffness it is there and there is a trismus so, um, uh, there is a neck it has been stiff one so these symptoms are observed so we have started the treatment the injection myfex so which is containing magnesium along with the calcium so most of the time whenever hypomagnesium it is suspected so at that time animal concurrently it is having hypocalcemia 
in case of large animal but here magnesium it is essential one so this myfex it is given 80 ml intravenous along with the therapy and along with the timing uh, it is given so immediately after one dose this animal they have given response to the treatment so this particular case uh, so this uh, owner they have sent this video so uh, immediately after second day uh, after giving treatment uh, that calf it is having the normal gait so uh, such cases we can differentiate from the uh, diseases which are having nervous system like tetanus so in case of tetanus there is a lock jaw condition it is there there is a total stiffness of the all four legs so we can see and uh, generally stiffness it is started from the mouth cavity there is a first mouth cavity it is affected and then the leg of animal is affected and uh, uh, tetanus it is most commonly observed in the young age group of animal and they are having history of wound in polio encephalo malaria uh, in a polio encephalo malaria due to the deficiency uh, of the thymine uh, because uh, in ruminants there is a destruction of thymine uh, after the intake of more grain or concentrated diet is there and animals they are uh, facing the problems of nervous thymine so then uh, also you have to differentiate from the encephalitis so this polio encephalo malaria that is cerebro cortical necrosis it is most commonly seen in the goat in uh, goat we can see there is a star gazing appearance it is there and uh, we have to also differentiate from the hypovitaminosis so these are the differential diagnosis for the hypomagnesemia uh, the next case uh, this is uh, bura mura buffalo which is uh, having age 4 uh, year uh, four year and which is the female animal uh, having lateral recumbency again there is a rotation of head there is ataxia and restlessness so this uh, photograph or video it has been taken at the night because at night hour so that animal owner they are having the facing the problem so there is a continuous attack of the herd uh, in a particular in this particular buffalo so there is a rotation of head it is there so generally in a uh, polio encephalo malaria uh, it is a uh, less common in case of the adult animal as compared to the uh, small animal and uh, in this case uh, this uh, owner uh, or this veterinarian uh, local veterinarians they have previously it is treated with the myfex uh, but uh, considering the case of hypomagnesemia but there is no any response it is there so lateral on uh, uh, i have suggested uh, by giving injection uh, thymine Uh, so trabivet uh, at the dose of 80 ml intravenous route uh, in normal saline it is given by slow uh, by slow uh, in motion and uh, after immediately after giving one dose of this thymine uh, these animals they are having uh, recovery so injection thymine it is essential in case of the polio encephalo malaria because this buffalo it has been pre previously treated with the myfex but there is no any response it is there so on the basis of uh, symptoms and uh, uh, examination uh, diagnosed as a polio encephalo malaria so this is the video after the uh, treatment so immediately uh, after giving treatment within 4 to 6 hour this buffalo they are having the normal gait as well as uh, it started taking the food as well as water so next case it is the uh, <clears throat> non descript open bullock which is uh, having age group of 5 years and uh, having inappetence there is a drooping of the left ear lacrimation and restlessness so in this uh, photograph we can see uh, so this left ear left ear of the animal uh, it is not moving one so on the basis of uh, this uh, video and uh, photographs uh, we have diagnosed it is as a unilateral facial nerve paralysis so in this video we can clear cut see there is a no movement of the left ear while this right ear it is having the normal movement as well as this left ear uh, there is a ocular discharge it is there so from left ear there is ocular discharge we can see so on the basis of this uh, uh, video and this photograph we can see or uh, we have diagnosed as a case of the unilateral facial nerve paralysis so in case of the large animal this unilateral facial nerve paralysis uh, it is most commonly occur uh, as a due to the trauma because this animal owners they are biting their animal with the help of stick or uh, any any hard object and due to the uh, any injury to the head region it can leads to the facial paralysis not sudden but some after some period there is a facial nerve paralysis uh, cases it 
can you see so this is another bulb there is a drooping of the uh, left uh, uh, eyelid and drooping of the left ear it is there so both cases they are having the unilateral facial nerve paralysis due to the history of trauma by the animal owner and here the lac lacrimation drooping of left ear and eyelid before the treatment you can see so uh, in a clinical examination there is a drooping of ear eyelid uh, sometime uh, that affected area uh, nostril it has been drooped one and uh, in a clinical uh, or neurological examination uh, so whenever the nervous system of the animal is affected so which are very easy one at the even at the field level so minez reflex so minez reflex it has been a uh, <coughs> Uh, see whether the uh, activity of that particular organ it is normal or abnormal one. So generally, this uh, facial nerve, that is cranial nerve, seventh cranial nerve, uh, generally it is affected in the unilateral facial nerve paralysis. So to see the proper functioning of cr cranial nerve, minage reflex, it is uh, this test it has been done. So in this test, whatever the affected area it is there, so we have to uh, uh, apply or we have to uh, like this uh, movement uh, um, in front of the ear. Or in front of the eyelid, we have to make the movement uh, like this. Or you have to uh, <clears throat> you have to take your hands towards the eye. So in a very uh, slow manner, not in the fast uh, manner. And in that case, if there is a blinking of eyelid, it is there. So in that case, uh, it uh, indicates there is a positive minus reflex. And whenever we are uh, putting uh, the hands in front of the or near the eye, and if animals they are not having activity or there is no any movement of the uh, eyelid uh, or eye, it is there. So then, then it is the negative one. So this minage reflex it is uh, done for the uh, to check the movement of the eyelids or ears or uh, <clears throat> to see the activity of the cranial nerve. And also this uh, palpebral and corneal reflexes, uh, these are the sluggish one. So only with the help of needle, tip of the needle, you have to pick the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, ear of the animal. And if there is no any movement uh, from the animal side, then uh, we can say there is a less response to the nervous system. There is a lack, a lack of tonicity in the facial muscles of the left side, it is there. Uh, then uh, abnormal jaw movement are there. And uh, also there is asymmetry of the uh, muscle uh, contraction of the face region. So in this case, uh, uh, these antibiotics which are having blood brain barrier, they are most useful. So third generation cephalosporin, septriaxone at the dose rate of 10 milligram per kg body weight intramuscular for a period of five days. Because such cases, they are requiring more time to the recovery. So minimum one week treatment, it is essential for. Then NSAID, flunixin, meglumine, then tonophosphone. So this phosphorus, it is essential uh, for the muscle tonicity or for, to increase the uh, tone of the muscle. So tonophosphone, 15 ml, it is recommended uh, and on alternate day, uh, three doses, it has been given one. And injection tribivate, nerve and tonic, uh, 5 to 10 ml according to the body weight, you can give for a period of one week. So all this treatment protocol, uh, it has been followed in this particular case. And uh, after treatment, uh, here we can appreciate uh, the movement of ear. So this movement of ear, it has been increased one. So animals, they are moving their ear properly after giving the treatment. So here the movement of ear, it is there. So this is the photograph or video after the third day of the treatment. So after, uh, after a period of five to seven days, so these, uh, uh, in this photo or video, you can see these uh, animals, they are taking normal feed material. And there's also movement of the ear, it is proper one. There is no any ocular discharge. Movement of the eyelid, it is normal one. Then uh, next case, uh, uh, when a uh, killer uh, bullock, it is uh, uh, presented, male animal uh, that is a uh, four-year-old, history which is having uh, this animal, they are attempting uh, for the defecation and they are suffering with the straining. So animal, they are uh, taking the position for a defecation, but there is no any uh, uh, feces, they are coming from the uh, rectum of the animal and there is a decrease in the food intake, animals, they are very much restless in this case. So, on the basis of a uh, clinical examination, we have diagnosed it is as a flatulent colic. So, colic, uh, it is a common and frequently observed condition at the field level. So, in this video, we can see there is a lateral recumbency and animal, uh, they are having uh, pain 
or there is a struggling movement are there and in the in this photograph these animals they are having straining while uh, defecation so animals they are uh, taking the position uh, for the defecation but uh, only there is a pumping of anus we can see so sometime in case of the rabies such type of symptom it is there but in that uh, rabies uh, suspected cases there is a huge nasal discharge animals cannot take water properly and uh, there is a frenzy and uh, uh, more aggressive behavior we can see while in this case only animals they are uh, attempting for the defecation there is a pumping of anus it is there but there is no any defecation it is there so this colic uh, it is a broad term or it is a clinical signs which is exhibited whenever there is any abnormality in the gastrointestinal tract it is there so it may be due to the stretching the wall of intestine either due to the fluid or any gas or ingesta if uh, there is any sudden change in the diet of the animal so at that time there is accumulation of gas in the intestine we can see or if there is any ischemia due to the twisting of intestine due to the intersusception valvulus also animals they are facing the colic or due to the inflammation chronic enteritis or peritonitis it can also cause the inflammation of the intestine and this flatulent colic uh, colic it is most common uh, type of colic in case of the bovine and in this intermittent type of symptoms we can see so in this uh, case there is a scanty cases animals they are having attempt for the defecation straining there is a bilateral abdominal distension accumulation of gas there is a pain it is there restlessness we can see grinding of the teeth due to the whenever animal they are having any pain in the gi tract there is a grinding of teeth it is a typical symptom so other in a, in a small animal grinding of teeth we can see in case of the parasitic infestation but in large animal grinding of the teeth it indicates the pain uh, then frequent kicking at the belly or abdomen so lateral recumbency animals they are frequently getting and lying up it is there and animals they are looking at the flank area so in this uh, bullock uh, it is also colic uh, case it is there and they are looking towards the flank and moderate type of dehydration we can see so here uh, we can see so in this animal there is a, a lateral recumbency uh, the sternal recumbency it is there animals they are looking towards the uh, flank region and there is the intermittent colic it is there so intermittently animals they are uh, uh, paddling movement or struggling movement are there there so in this cases uh, uh, no any uh, antibiotic it is uh, needed only in uh, chronic cases we have to go for the antibiotic otherwise only anti spasmodic drugs they have uh, uh, take care of the fully so injection diclofenac uh, is uh, necessary at the dose rate of 0.5 mg therapy fluid therapy in case of the gi disorder it is most important so ringer sacred 4 to 6 liter intravenous or uh, this uh, yeah, avil then fluoxin meglumine and trabivit and orally we have to give the magnesium sulfate so because most of the time due to the accumulation of ingesta in the um, intestinal lumen so uh, due to that also uh, pain it has been occurred one so as a purgation or to remove the feces normally from the uh, gi tract we have to give the magnesium sulfate in the water so this photograph after the treatment so after uh, within uh, two days so after two days of the treatment this is the second day of treatment and it is third day of treatment so on the third day of treatment immediately animal they have started to take the feed as well as water so such cases uh, colic cases you can differentiate from the intestinal obstruction uh, this traumatic pericarditis at the above mesial displacement in this exception sickal dilatation or sometime in a female animal this dystocia torsion or any uterine tear it is there so all this uh, uh, in uh, all colic cases uh, proper uh, clinical detailed clinical examination it is essential one the next case uh, uh, female cow which is a non descript one uh, having the age group of uh, the age of 5 years old and uh, which is having a distended abdomen and it is the mid pregnant one and there is anorexia and uh, they are having difficulty while the uh, uh, breathing so this cow it is presented uh, in mid mid pregnancy uh, uh, for 6 uh, 6 six, six month pregnant cow it is there and there is a distension of abdomen it is there so most of the time uh, distension of abdomen we can observe due to the pregnancy but in advanced uh, pregnancy uh, such type of distension it is generally noticeable but uh, this cow it is having mid pregnancy 
and uh, in this case uh, we have go for the uh, diagnosis uh, due to the gossypol poisoning uh, according to the history of owner in most of the cases at field level history of owner it is most important one because we have to rely on the history of owner and most of the cases we can treat according to the history proper history and if history it is not proper one in that case we have to go for the detailed clinical examination so in this uh, uh, cattle because uh, this is pregnant one and uh, might be due to the pregnancy animals they have uh, uh, told uh, that uh, that uh, cattle it has been consumed gossypol seed for a longer period of time uh, generally this gossypol uh, toxicity it is not occurring in the um, uh, adult ruminant it is mostly in the pre ruminant because whatever the microbial digestion of women uh, they have cover the whatever the absorption of toxin they are prevented one in adult animal while in pre ruminant there is a absorption of uh, gossypol uh, it has been occurred due to the uh, cotton seed toxicity but uh, in this uh, cattle uh, it is having uh, dyspnea Uh, difficulty in the respiration there is anorexia bilateral distended abdomen restlessness conjunctival mucous membrane it has been uh, congested one due to the dehydration and it is having salivation some nervous signs they are also observable and uh, after the uh, examination of the ph because uh, ph examination it is uh, most of the time it is necessary one though this animal it is pregnant one but for the proper uh, treatment we have to uh, examine sometime the ruminal fluid so these uh, rumen fluid ph it is having in the range of 8.5 to 9 so it is having the alkaline type of ph so generally uh, gossypol uh, toxicity this gossypol uh, it is not poisonous one uh, and it is a chronic type of toxicity we can see in the adult animal so if the animals they are feeding uh, gossypol seed or cotton seed uh, cotton seed Uh, over a longer period of time and in the excess quantity only after that only animal they are exhibiting otherwise uh, in small quantity there is no any uh, clinical exhibition it is there and uh, this gossypol uh, uh, this uh, gossypol it is active component in the cotton seed and uh, it occurs in the two form in the free form and it is a um, it is bind with the protein that is the albumin so this uh, whatever the uh, gossypol which is binded with the protein uh, it is not harmful one but this free gossypol they can be readily absorbed through the uh, ruminant or through the rumen of animal and uh, uh, clinical signs we can see uh, in case of the uh, due to the free gossypol uh, circulation in the blood of animal or in the gi tract so immediately we have started the treatment in this case so fluid therapy and uh, this uh, <clears throat> in this aid drug uh, there is anti bloat preparation it has been given one and uh, is flunixin meglumine and antibiotic it is necessary one because this cow it is pregnant one and uh, to uh, check the any infection in the gi tract uh, this amoxicillin clobdacillin or any antibiotic we can give uh, only oxytetracycline it is not recommended one and uh, this uh, metoclopramide uh, <clears throat> so this uh, injection metoclopramide uh, which will helpful uh, to increase the gi motility uh, of the animal and then uh, this uh, injection ferritas that is iron sorbitol uh, in gossypol toxicity uh, this uh, parental or oral iron preparation they are very essential one because whatever the gossypol free gossypol it is there so whenever we are giving iron preparation that uh, uh, there is one complex that is gossypol iron a complex it has been developed and whatever the free gossypol uh, it has been there in the gi tract it it has been prevented uh, by the gi tract so there is a uh, decrease in the absorption of the gossypol whenever we are providing iron or hematinic to the animal also this magnesium sulfate uh, to remove the excess uh, gossypol uh, from the gi tract of the animal acetic acid due to the alkaline nature ph of the rumen food and uh, blotocil uh, it is given as a tympani uh, to relieve the tympani and uh, and after a second day or after two days of the treatment uh, it is advised uh, ferrous sulfate bolus two uh, two bolus bid generally uh, it is indicated alternately because if we are giving daily uh, this iron preparation again there is a indigestion uh, problem it can be occurring so according to the condition of the case and according to the severity of the uh, uh, symptoms we have to give this uh, ferrous sulfate so on the second day so immediately after the second day of the treatment animal they have started to take the feed of the 
so this cow it is pregnant one so it is in the mid pregnancy so <clears throat> that uh, animal owner they have sent this photograph so we have taken the follow up of that case so because uh, uh, we are uh, thinking that uh, whether there is any abortion or any complication it can be occur after treatment or after discharge so after a, a three month of uh, or two to three month of the period we have taken the follow up and that owner they have the send the photograph after parturition so in this uh, uh, photograph we can appreciate so after parturition that cow it has been uh, given uh, parturition or uh, uh, calf, these two calf so this uh, two calf they have been born normally after the uh, gestation period then uh, next it is the uh, one one and half year old uh, male animal non descript one which is presented with the reduced food intake there is a salivation uh, animal they are having ataxia there is a rough hair coat of the animal it is having difficulty in the respiration and some nervous signs they have been observed so most of the time at the field level such mixed type of uh, symptoms we can uh, face uh, in a number of cases so uh, one of the uh, disease that is macrophylluriasis so we have to uh, rule out whenever animals they are having the nervous type, uh, type of symptoms so this macrophylluriasis it is the larval stage it is a very broad term so macrophylluria it is the larval stage of the cetaria this uh, parapheralia or stephanophylluria and the larval stage uh, they are not harmful one so normally in adult animal or in adult cattle this cetaria uh, organism this nematode they are normally present without causing any harm but before maturation or before adult born when these parasites uh, uh, in, in the immature stage that is in microphylaria that is larval stage so when this larval stage uh, 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 this in larval stage when this microphylaria they are moving in the body fluid or in the tissue fluid of the animal at that time they are uh, exhibiting the different signs otherwise in uh, this adult worm they are not uh, harmful to the uh, animal and uh, most of the time after post mortem examination at the field level whenever we are opening the uh, this abdominal peritoneal cavity uh, this uh, whitish milky type of uh, cetaria uh, we found but they are not harmful one but when this microphylaria the larval stage they are moving in the body fluid at that time they are exhibiting the Uh, different type of symptoms so in draft animal or in the bullock there is a reduced working capacity or in the milking animal milk production of the animal it has been decreased one so this is the bullock which is uh, having the nervous sign uh, slight salivation high uh, slight increase in the temperature respiration or tachycardia uh, we have observed and uh, in this case uh, it is very difficult to uh, diagnose in this case so due to the nervous nature uh, we have uh, primarily uh, diagnosed as a trypanosomiasis and we have taken the blood smear examination or this uh, wet blood film examination so uh, in this uh, case uh, there is a complete anorexia salivation stiff gait convulsion uh, these symptoms we have observed but after taking the sample blood sample uh, for the diagnosis purpose suspecting as a case of trypanosoma so in a wet blood film examination directly uh, whatever the edta blood we have taken on a cover slip and we have put a cover slip on it and uh, we found the microphylaria this larval stage of this microphylaria it is found in the uh, this microscopic examination here we can appreciate the moving type of filaria microphylaria so this larval stage we can found in the uh, wet blood film examination only you have to take one drop of uh, blood and we have to put cover slip and examine under the 10x microscope and this moving parasites we have found in this case so this is the case of microphylaria so here here we can uh, see the, this long thread like microphylaria these all are the rbcs these are the rbcs and this is the uh, thread like organism it is nothing but the microphylaria this is the nematode infection so uh, for the confirmation or from the academic point of view uh, we have to go for the modified or uh, morphological uh, examination of this particular parasite so modified not method so this method um, it is for the confirmation of the which type of cetaria whether it is cetaria digitata or labio papillota it is there so there are number of species it is there but cetaria digitata it is the most common nematode which is found in the peritoneal cavity so this modified not method it is a very simple method first you have to take 1 ml of the um, edta blood so this uh, uh, whatever the anticoagulant blood it is there 
So in a 15 ml test tube, you have to take one ml of blood and two uh, nine ml of the two percent formula. Then you have to mix vigorously, and you have to go for the centrifugation. And after centrifugation, you have to remove the superannuate and whatever the pellet, white pellet it is obtained. In that pellet, you have to add 0.1 percent methylene blue. And uh, you have to uh, whatever the sediment which is obtained after addition of this methylene blue, that sediment you have to take on a cover slip, uh, on a glass slide, put a cover slip, and examine under the microscope. So in the microscope, uh, these are uh, these um, circular. Uh, it is the RBC. These are the RBC, and this is the Cetaria organism. So for the whether it is male or female one or which type of parasite it is there. Uh, we have to go for the modified knot method examination. This is very, uh, this is the concentration uh, uh, technique, and in a very small sample, we can identify very well this area organism. So, these are uh, whenever we are staining with the methylene blue, so we can see this curve like of uh, tail appearance of this area species. So in this case, we have given injection avermectin because uh, there are a number of treatment options for the microfilorosis treatment. It is there like this levamisol or diethyl carbazamine citrate. It is there uh, or anthiomyelin. It is had, it has been tried one, but this avermectin or doramectin they are having the very good result. So avermectin uh, at weekly interval two doses it has been given along with the meloxicam because animals they are having the um, uh, some inflammatory swelling on the uh, ventral abdomen. Along with the fluid therapy, then uh, antihistaminic and uh, feritas injection uh, we have given. And after uh, um, 15 days, there is a recovery or normal um, feed intake it has been observed. So the next case, it is the, uh, again, non-descript uh, bullock it is there, which is having five-year uh, age group uh, and uh, which is presented with a coffee-colored urine. And, uh, and in this animal, it is having straining while defecation. They are having straining or pain while the defecation. And uh, there is also difficulty in the respiration. So such type of uh, simple cases we have many times uh, attended at the field level. But uh, most of the time, whenever we are differentiating uh, or whenever we are suspecting the coffee colored urine, in case of the bullock especially, first thing in mind, it is the bubbish uh, So most of the time, or anaplasmosis, or any copper deficiency it is there. So apart from that, there are some causes of uh, this red urine it is there. So this case, it has been diagnosed as a onion poisoning. So onion poisoning, generally uh, onion poisoning does not occur or uh, if animals, they are taking two or three kg of the onion uh, per day, there is nothing, uh, it will happen. But if animals, they are fed with a uh, large quantity of onion for over a longer period of time, at that time, uh, there is a coffee-color urine or hemoglobin urea we can see. So generally this onion, uh, this uh, uh, whole plant of onion or a seed of onion, uh, because India it is a largest country in the onion production, and especially in Maharashtra there is more production of the onion. And generally during the scarcity period, or if the animal owner they are having the uh, large production of onion, they are uh, keeping this onion to the animal. And in some cases it, it has been toxic one, and it can produce the particular urine. So in onion poisoning, uh, this uh, onion, it has containing, uh, or when this uh, onion they have ingested by the animal. So in the rumen, there is a formation of the yen, uh, this uh, diacyl uh, disulfide, and uh, yen, yen allyl disulfide. And this yen allyl disulfide, it causes precipitation and there is a formation of hinge body in the RBC. So whenever uh, blood smear it is prepared from such animal, there is a hinge body formation, we can see, there is due to the precipitation. And also, uh, <clears throat> we can see the uh, coffee color urine, which is prominent one. So in this case, there is a complete anorexia, coffee color urine, straining, while defecation, dark feces. So whenever hemoglobin rate is there, animals, they are having the uh, dark or brownish type of feces. Constipation, whenever loss of blood it is there, animal uh, directly having the constipation problem. Animals, they are having difficulty in the respiration due to the uh, anemia. And uh, that animal, it is having the clear-cut history of the ingestion of onion plant. So there is a pale mucous membrane, we can see. Uh, 
uh, in such cases, what should be the line of treatment or what should be our approach of the treatment? So, uh, first, of, uh, first of all, we have to give the fluid therapy. Whenever there is a hypovolemia, it is there or any fluid loss from the body, it is there. We have to give the fluid therapy, intravenous fluid. But uh, in uh, such cases, uh, due to the anemia, there is very difficulty to give intravenous fluid in the large quantity. So alternatively, uh, in addition to the intravenous fluid, we have to go for the oral rehydration therapy. Uh, so in uh, most of the in moderate dehydration or any diarrhea cases, we can also give the oral rehydration therapy. And uh, there is no any antibiotic it is necessary in case of the onion poisoning. Only ascorbic acid, uh, vitamin C. So this vitamin C, uh, it has been uh, essential to prevent the uh, this, uh, oxidative damage to the intestinal epithelium. And uh, tonophosphan, to increase the motility of the GI tract, tonophosphan, it is there. Or in some literature, vitamin E and selenium injection, it has been also recommended. One. And only ruminatoric uh, uh, bolus or any preparations we can give orally. So in this case, so this, this urine you can see on the first day or on the uh, day of the presentation. And uh, after every uh, 24 hour, we have collected the urine and you can see uh, here there is a disappearance of the coffee color. And uh, uh, after the five or six days of the treatment, so generally three within uh, three days, there is a recovery we can observe. Or most of the time, five days treatment is essential one. And after the five days of treatment, we can see the uh, there is a normal uh, color of the urine or pale urine or slight yellow color of the urine, it is there. So whenever we are attending the cases at field level or from the academic point of view, these small things are very important. So just you have to, uh, if you are not having any test tube, you have to collect uh, uh, this uh, urine sample in a container and you have to observe the change in the color of the urine. So uh, that uh, uh, follow-up, it will give a very clue uh, for the recovery or for the, uh, uh, to take the prognosis of that particular case. So in such cases, we have to differentiate from the babesiosis, thylariosis, anaplasma, leptospira, then post parturient hemoglobinuria, there is phosphorus deficiency hemoglobinuria, uh, bacillary hemoglobinuria, or even due to the excessive ingestion of the cold water. So if animals they are offered with the cold water, and this cold water or excess uh, uh, ingestion of the cold water, it causes or it, it increases the osmotic fragility and there is a disintegration of the RBCs and there is immaturity or hemoglobinuria, we can see. So all these diseases, we can differentiate from the hemoglobinuria. Then the next uh, and the most important, which is frequently uh, observed at the field level, uh, that is a uh, uh, HF crossbred animal, which is having six year old. Uh, and again, it is having coffee color urine. So there is a complete anorexia and a presence of ticks on the body. So uh, ticks, uh, uh, tick history, it, uh, it will give a very uh, good clue uh, for the uh, proper diagnosis. So on the basis of uh, clinical examination um, and confirmative diagnosis, this case it has been diagnosed as a babesiosis. So in Babesia, uh, we have attended many cases. So most of the field vet, uh, they are frequently attending such type of cases. Uh, with the history of tick, there is hemoglobinuria, high rise of body temperature, difficulty in the respiration, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, jaundice in case of the terminal stages of the Babesia. So drug of choice uh, for Babesia is diaminizing acetorid at the dose rate of 7 mg per kg body weight by drip intramuscular rule. Only once uh, this uh, treatment is essential and if required, so after seven days, we can repeat. Otherwise, uh, there is no any need of the uh, repetition. And along with the uh, berenil, uh, this injection of oxytetracycline, uh, uh, mostly in hemoprotozoan diseases, oxyt is given in the double dose, 20 milligram per kg body weight by intravenous. So for a period of three to five days, we have to give oxytetracycline. In meloxicam and injection peritas, and to remove the ticks or for the uh, tick problem, uh, ivermectin or doramectin injection, it is essential. Only for one time or manually it can be removed or any spray we can apply on the body of animal. So in this uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, picture, we can appreciate, this is the on the uh, uh, day of the presentation, on the zero day, this coffee color urine it is there. After second day, there is a slight discoloration of the urine. And after the fourth day of treatment, there is a complete uh, normal urine we can found in such uh, type of cases. So again, uh, this Babesia, we can differentiate it from thylaria, anaplasma, trypanosoma, or post parturient hemoglobinuria. Now, uh, basically this uh, PPH problem, uh, it has been uh, more commonly observed in the buffaloes and in the peak lactation. So after uh, six, to uh, six to eight weeks of the parturition, 
uh, mostly there is a deficiency of phosphorus it has been observed uh, mostly in the buffalo and after giving this uh, inorganic phosphorus or phosphorus injection animals they are giving the good type of response while in anaplasmosis jaundice it is most commonly observed and uh, rarely hemoglobin urea it can be occur one and in this case uh, this uh, oxytetracycline it will give the good result while in trypanosomiasis uh, there is a head pressing uh, uh, we can see there is a uh, rotation or the circling movement we can see and nervous signs are there and immediately after giving glucose therapy or this uh, isometamidium uh, chloride uh, this uh, triquin injection triquin uh, uh, animals they are giving uh, very good response Uh, next case, um, there are uh, two cases are there. In this uh, case, uh, there is uh, one is a uh, killer bullock. It is there, and another it is a uh, HF crossbred uh, calf. And uh, this killer bullock it is having seven seven year age, and uh, this HF crossbred uh, calf it is having five month old. Uh, both are the male animal, and they are having the history of high fever, inappetence, uh, depression. There is a uh, respiratory distress, difficulty in the respiration. nasal discharge and there is a bulging of the eye so here uh, in this picture we can see so on the basis of uh, a clinical examination and history this case it has been diagnosed as a thylariosis so most of the time in thylariosis we can see there is enlargement of lymph node high fever it is there and uh, nasal discharge we can see so here in this uh, bullock we can see there is a, a petechial hemorrhages so pinpoint hemorrhages we can see on the uh, congenital cavern mucous membrane there is a decrease in the food and water intake and a loss of body condition it is there and uh, there is a tachycardia uh, uh, due to the enlargement of the lymph node and due to the anemia uh, it is there and the presence of tick on the uh, body of animal and uh, such animal they are having the hard feces and uh, uh, ruminal reticular contraction it has been decreased one and animal they are having the decreased ruminal motility so in case of thylaria at field level uh, generally thumb rule for the diagnosis high rise of body temperature enlargement of superficial lymph node especially the prescapular lymph node they are enlarged one and uh, animals they are having the recurrent type of fever it is there and presence of ticks on the uh, animal body it is there and uh, this disease it is most commonly observed in the high milking uh, yield of the animal especially in the crossbred animal so crossbred animal they are mostly affected one so uh, most of the hemoprotozoan diseases they are frequently observed in the high yielding animal due to the stress condition this babesia thylaria this uh, trypanosoma even anaplasma uh, due to the stress factor such a uh, cases it has been uh, uh, mostly observed one so here we can see there is a pink point hemorrhages uh, on the congenital mucous membrane this is the typical symptom in case of the clinical examination so here uh, there is a increase in the prescapular lymph node so prescapular lymph node it has been increased in this case so this is the typical uh, case this is the hf crossbred calf uh, in uh, uh, this uh, it is suspected for uh, thylariosis because this calf it is having high rise of body temperature along with presence of tick and enlargement of the superficial lymph node and bulging of the uh, edema so bulging of the eyelid it is there so corneal edema it has been observed one so this is a very rare case so in uh, most of the cases uh, we are not found this type of symptom but uh, this is a atypical case in which we can see the bulging of edema it is there so whenever you are suspecting the cases of thylaria in case of the calf so you have to examine the congenital mucous membrane so most of the time we are neglecting such cases uh, considering that there is something allergy or any stinge bite or any uh, anything it is there uh, allergic reaction it is there but uh, you have to rule out also for the thylariosis so in a blood smear uh, examination this uh, lymph smear examination so in thylaria lymph smear uh, it is uh, important uh, for the uh, presence of this coach blue bodies or cytosine in the uh, lymphocyte so this is the lymphocyte so this is the lymphocyte and in this lymphocytes these are uh, cytosine or coach blue bodies they are pushing the cytoplasm so generally this lymphocyte they are having the intact type of nucleus but whenever there is a presence of this um, uh, uh, cytosine or coach blue bodies uh, these uh, organism they are pushing the nucleus or they are occupying in the uh, cytoplasm of that particular uh, cell and this is the neutrophil this is the band cell uh, which is not matured one uh, so this lymph smear examination it is most important in the thylariosis 
Uh, then, then drug of choice it is B paracon at the dose rate of 2.5 mg per kg body weight by intramuscular route. Only single injection it is necessary. Along with oxytetracycline, melonex, antihistaminic or injection feritas we can uh, give. So after treatment, uh, you can appreciate there is a the swelling. It has been reduced one and animal. They are having the normal feed as well as milk intake. So again, we have to differentiate these uh, thyroidosis cases from trypanosomiasis. So in trypanosomiasis, extracellular, uh, these uh, uh, structure we can see uh, which are moving in the RBCs. While this uh, Babesia and thyloria organism, their intracellular appearance, it is there. Uh, anaplasma, malignant catarrhal fever, rinderpest, or sometimes tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, it is a chronic uh, disease in which uh, there is a persistence of uh, respiratory distress, it is there. And um, uh, all uh, lymph nodes, all visible lymph nodes, they are swollen in case of the tuberculosis. Then next uh, case, it is red canary uh, bullock, which is having three-year uh, age and uh, which is having bloody diarrhea, staining while defecation, there is a severe depression, and there is no any history of the uh, deworming. So again, so in uh, this case, <clears throat> we have uh, diagnosed it is as an intestinal cystosomiasis. Uh, so in field level, this nasal cystosomiasis, it is commonly uh, we found. But this intestinal cystosoma, it is a very rare condition, it is there. So this intestinal uh, cystosoma, uh, uh, this uh, pa parasite, uh, which is due to cause this cystosoma spindle, these, uh, uh, these parasites, they are having affinity for the uh, blood vessels, that is mesenteric vein and uh, this portal vein. Uh, and while this cystosoma nasale, in the nasal vein or in the nasal cavity, they are uh, having the precedence. Uh, this uh, particular, uh, this uh, cystosoma spindale, they are having the corpus uh, circus uh, circariae. Uh, this uh, circariae of this uh, uh, parasite, they are having the fork-like uh, structure. In next slide, I will uh, show you. And also, they are having the lateral spine. Eggs of this uh, cystosoma, they are having the lateral spines. So, thin-like, thread-like uh, structure we can see on the uh, eggs. Uh, on the outer surface of the eggs. So here uh, we can very well uh, understood the life uh, cycle of the intestinal cystosomiasis. So when the animals they are taking the, uh, in any uh, drinking of water from the uh, pond, especially from the uh, stagnated water, it is it has been taken one. So after the, taking the egg from the feed material or to the water. So these parasites, they are multiplied in the mesenteric and portal vein and they are excreted through the feces of the animal. And in the uh, feces, when these eggs, they are getting uh, proper uh, humidity and temperature, there is a hatching of egg, it has been occurred. And from the egg, there is a myracidium stage, it has been released one. And after uh, this myracidium, they are reaching towards the proper intermediate host. The snail, they act as an intermediate host. So after the development of sporosis in the cell, uh, there is circaria, they have been released from the scale. Uh, so this circaria, it is having the fork-like uh, tail. Uh, fork circaria's appearance, it is there. And when this circaria, uh, they are very active one. So they are swimming in the water or they can be invaded in any waterlogging area. And uh, uh, when the animal or any human being, uh, they are uh, um, grazing in, in case of the waterlog area or in the paddy straw area at that time, this circaria, they are having capacity to penetrate uh, through direct intact skin or they can be taken from the food or from the pasture of the animal. And uh, through the penetration or through the food material, again, this cystosoma, uh, they have been entered into the body of animal. And again, uh, there is a development of this adult uh, type of worm uh, parasite in the mesenteric vein, it is there. And again, there is a, uh, after the uh, growth of these parasites, again, they have been excreted through the uh, feces of the animal. This is the life cycle of the intestinal cystosomiasis. So there is a, a bloody diarrhea, blood tinged diarrhea, completely uh, uh, blood tinged diarrhea, or sometimes there is a frank uh, uh, blood uh, we can see in the feces of animal. There is anorexia, dehydration, and animal they are having history uh, grazing near the pond area or stagnated water consumption. It is there slightly. There is increase in the body temperature, heart rate as well as respiration rate, and due to the loss of blood, there is a pale mucous membrane. It is there. So here pale mucous membrane, and there is a frank uh, blood along with the small quantity of feces we can see. So <clears throat> on the basis of history, clinical examination, fecal examination, fecal examination by sedimentation route, uh, it is most important. And uh, we can see spindle type of uh, eggs uh, in case of the sedimentation technique. 
So drug of choice for the cystosoma, intestinal cystosoma, it is praziquantin. While in nasal cystosoma, this uh, uh, enthumalin uh, <coughs> we are generally giving. This is a praziquantin at the dose rate of 25 milligram per kg body weight orally. And it is given. And if uh, um, animal, they are not giving any response. Uh, so after two days uh, duration or three days duration, we can repeat this uh, praziquantin. Uh, drug. Then along with this sulfadimidine, uh, then uh, adchrome injection, ascorbic acid, and, and antihistaminic and fluid therapy, it is needed. So after giving treatment animal, they are passing the normal feces. So here uh, we can see the feces, uh, they are appearing towards the normal side, but still there is a blood tinge appearance, it is there. So animal started feed intake and you can uh, very well appreciate here the normal uh, fecal output from the uh, after the two days or three days of the treatment. So on the basis of fecal examination, most of the cases we can diagnose. So whether your uh, feces, they have been normal one or uh, sometimes there is a whitish color, semi-solid feces, we can see in case of the acidic uh, indigestion or uh, sub-acute sub ruminal acidosis. So in sub-acute ruminal acidosis, mostly uh, due to the lactic acid, there is a, a whitish appearance of the feces and semi-solid um, uh, feces with the foul smell we can see. Sometimes uh, this undigested food material we can see in the fecal material. Whenever animal they are having um, uh, affections of the gastrointestinal or motility disorder it is there. So at that time we can see undigested food material or food particle it is there. So or, uh, if there is uh, any bacterial invasion of the intestine it is there. So collateral type of enteritis we can see. So mucus uh, of the intestine it has been voided in the feces along with the feces of animal. So, it is a cataral enteritis type of, uh, we can see in the bacterial type of infection. Sometimes in case of oxidiosis, especially in the young animal, you can see only frank, frank blood or along with the blood, there is a fecal material, it is there. So, only on the physical uh, examination or physical appearance of the fecal material, most of the time, some uh, tentative diagnosis we can uh, make uh, in some cases. Or examination of rumen fluid. So, in case of the normal, there is an olive green or greenish type of rumen fluid, it is there. While in case of acidosis, you can see there is a uh, whitish type of rumen fluid, it is there. While in alkaline indigestion, due to the decomposition of the protein, there is a blackish discoloration to the rumen fluid, it is there. Or simply uh, with of, uh, whenever we are withdrawing rumen fluid, so at that time, you have to uh, put one drop of this uh, fluid on the glass slide and you have to observe under the microscope. So in a microscope, uh, you can see, <clears throat> so in, a, in this uh, right side, you can see there is a numerous, this micro, these microorganism, these are the rumen microfluorite is there. And these uh, microflora, they are moving under the field 10X uh, microscope and there is a rapid, uh, the movement of the microfluorite is there. But if the animal, they are having any uh, disorder or uh, uh, indigestion problem, it is there. So at that time, uh, there is a sluggish ruminal uh, movement or uh, microscopic motility you can see. So in this second video, you can see uh, very, there is a very scanty type of protozoa it is there and they are very sluggish one. So generally this flagellated and ciliated protozoa, we are uh, generally seen in case of the ruminants. But uh, that uh, protozoal count, it has been decreased one, as well as there is a sluggish movement you can see in case of the microscopic examination. These are very small things we can uh, routinely do with the help of the only microscope and uh, cover sleep and glass slide, uh, it is there. So next it is uh, regurgitation. So regurgitation, it is a um, uh, broad term or it can be occur in uh, many uh, diseases. So whether it is a non-infectious causes or infectious causes are there. In case of the esophageal obstruction or esophagitis or in the uh, third stage of the milk fever, we can see regurgitation or some in case sometime in the acidosis or alkaline indigestion, it is there. Or actinobacillosis, hysteria, actinomycosis, botulism, tetanus. So all these are the infectious and non-infectious causes of the Regurgitation. At the field level, uh, it is very important. Differential diagnosis of regurgitation, it is most important one. So this chart, it has been prepared to differentiate uh, the causes of non-infectious origin and infectious origin. So <clears throat> one case we have uh, diagnosed. So there is a, <clears throat> in this uh, video, you can very well see there is a huge 
huge amount of is uh, ruminal content uh, they are expelling through the mouth cavity so in this case uh, this case it has been uh, presented with the small regurgitation it is there on the first day we have given only penicillin considering the case of listeriosis uh, we started with the penicillin drug but animal they are not uh, having any response so we have passed this stomach tube and there is a huge quantity of this a uh, ruminal content it has been come from the mouth cavity of the animal so this is the case of alkaline indigestion animal they are having severe uh, alkaline indigestion so after examination of the ruminal ph it is more than 10 so rumen ph it is more than 10 uh, in this case so after a uh, evacuating this ruminal content so second day you can see uh, there is a normal movement of the Uh, animal it is there animal started to take feed slowly as well as there is a uh, normal physiological parameter it has been uh, normal one so this is the uh, video on the second day of the treatment so in this case we have given the injection dextrose 5% as well as this acetic acid in distal water so acetic acid generally it is given in the distal water not uh, alone uh, it is generally recommended and uh, this evacuation of the ruminal content to the uh, stomach tube or any uh, tube it is there it is most important in such cases so uh, <clears throat> so after that uh, four, four day of treatment you can very well appreciate in this video that a bullock they are taking normal uh, food as well as water there is a normal regurgitate uh, normal rumination it is there fecal output it is normal one and uh, after fourth day of treatment we have given discharge to this case so uh, in a regurgitation uh, most of the time uh, this uh, differential diagnosis and uh, proper treatment so approach for the proper treatment it is most important because in regurgitation whenever the animals they are aspirating this uh, ruminal content so at that time there is a pneumonia aspiration pneumonia it can be offer and uh, any most of the animal they are not giving any response to the treatment then the next it is the jersey cow which is having 7 year old and uh, advanced pregnant uh, cow which is having huge swelling on the udder uh, which is having difficulty in the walking and there is a restlessness so on the basis of clinical examination and history we have diagnosed it is as a udder edema so udder edema uh, it is commonly observed in the primi paras so in the first time a parturan uh, uh, pregnant animal we can generally see and the pre partum so before parturation uh, generally udder here yeah, uh, found so this is a high producing dairy cattle uh, it has been affected so it is not a disease only it is a physiological or metabolic condition which uh, we can frequently see before parturition uh, most of the time at the field level we are uh, um, confusing with the mastitis Uh, but you have to consider the other edema or metabolic uh, uh, this physiological disturbances in case of the uh, high yield animal so there is a excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial tissue space and such animal they are having uh, difficulty in the milking and these animals they are very uh, prone to the mastitis and uh, any injury due to the pendulous udder there is injury it can be occur on the udder or on the teat of the animal so here here you can see this is the uh, jersey cow which is presented on the uh, before treatment uh, which is uh, having huge type of swelling on the udder that swelling or that udder it had been reaching uh, near towards the uh, uh, this ground and uh, this swelling it has been uh, extended uh, above the hock joint and uh, that uh, this animal it is having very much pain uh, edematous due to the edematous swelling they are having the pain on the palpation so uh, udder swelling with the fluid th thrill on the palpation we can feel such animal they are having very discomfort in the walking uh, difficult walking it is there and uh, milk of such animal it is very normal one there is a negative cmt test there is a consistency it has been very normal one uh, or a slight increase in the temperature we can see in, uh, in uh, some cases Uh, there is no any need of uh, giving any antibiotics so this is the physiological uh, disturbance it is there only uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug or anti stemini or frusemid frusemid it is the most important so to remove the fluid accumulated fluid uh, fluid in the um, interstitial tissue space this frusemid it is essential one and a uh, hot fermentation it is necessary one 
because in advanced pregnant animal uh, whatever the blood supply to the udder it has been restricted one so to enhance that bl blood uh, blood circulation uh, hot fermentation or exercise or walking of animal it is most important one and only by giving symptomatic treatment such cases it has been recovered one so after the second day of treatment uh, you can see there is a reduction in the swelling so near about 30 to 40 percent reduction of the swelling it is there and on the fourth day again there is a reduction of swelling and there is no any pain on the palpation of the udder and uh, on the sixth day of the treatment you can see there is a normal this is the pregnant cow but uh, the udder of the animal it is very normal one and uh, uh, this uh, case it has been recovered uh, very well <clears throat> so this is the dermatophytosis case so most of the time uh, nowadays uh, most of the skin affections uh, they are having economic losses our uh, market price value of the animal it has been uh, decreased one so we have to also concentrate on the uh, dermatological disorder so in at field level this dermatophytosis this fungal infection it is most frequently observed and uh, in uh, dermatophytosis there is a whitish asbestos like lesions we can see on the forehead so especially in case of the young uh, growing animal lesions they are restricted to the head region while in adult animal on the hump area or on the dorsal abdomen we can see the dermatophytosis lesion and uh, this fungi uh, they start to proliferate and uh, at the periphery and there is a circular ring like lesions we can see that's why it is also called as a ring worm and uh, such cases it has been easily uh, treated with the alternative therapy like orange oil and seed oil and uh, it acts as antimicrobial antifungal uh, and uh, it has a uh, this uh, <clears throat> in case of the skin disease and uh, they are not having any harmful effect on the body of animal uh, but only thing you have to give the treatment for a period of one month or three weeks to four weeks treatment it is necessary because in any fungal infection uh, one month treatment it is recommended generally and uh, alternatively also we can use this uh, tincture iodine or covidin iodine uh, they are also having the good result but the combination of this current oil or neem seed oil or this povidin or iodine or tincture iodine it will give the good result in any cases of the dermatophytosis so this is the sarcoptic mange case uh, this is uh, because this disease it is zoonotic nature so most of the time we are handling uh, the cases while examining the animal uh, and uh, in such uh, cases uh, in human being there is a reddish patellar pustular or itching it can be occur one so this uh, sarcoptic mange it is having zoonotic importance and uh, within a short period of time there is a diffuse distribution of the lesions we can see uh, and superficial mite and uh, in, uh, in uh, such cases there is a quickly there is a discolor uh, uh, secondary bacterial infection it is most commonly observed and animal they are having very itching so severe itching there is a scaly type of lesions and diffuse type of uh, Uh, good response along with the vitamin a it is essential and uh, if animal they are having the severe type of lesion so in such cases we have to go for the antibiotic therapy so never apply any solutions or any uh, uh, this amitraz or cypermethrin on the uh, exposed uh, body part because such substances it can absorb in the uh, skin of the animal and irritation or uh, it can aggravate the body condition of the animal so only whenever there is a separation of the bacterial infection after a 3 to 4 uh, days of the bacterial uh, uh, antib uh, antibiotic uh, this uh, course you have to apply this uh, any external application and after a, a treatment so in this photograph you can very well appreciate uh, there is a reduction in the erythema as well as animal they are having very normal appearance there is no any itching and uh, uh, there is a regrowth of hair uh, and uh, <clears throat> normal behavior of this uh, devani calf you can observe then um, uh, in uh, some uh, uh, sometime in a uh, field level so this is part or papilloma which is viral disease which are uh, frequently uh, treating uh, number of cases of this part or papilloma so at field level there are um, uh, many treatment option that is uh, injection lithium antimony thiamylate or application of thuja ointment or thuja extra uh, extract it is there or uh, uh, this extract orally or ointment locally we can apply 
but most of the time there is a recurrence uh, we can uh, mostly found because it is a viral disease so once animals they are uh, developing uh, their own cell mediated immunity automatically this wart lesion it has been rid of one but uh, in case of the um, severe type of wart lesions we have to go for the treatment and most of the time recurrence uh, in most cases recurrence it can be occurred so at that time you can go for the atohemotherapy at field level atohemotherapy it is the best option for the treatment of wart cases so this uh, uh, cow it is having the wart like so rice grain like uh, diffuse type of lesions on the uh, udder as well as on the feet of the animal so in this case we have given atohemotherapy so atohemotherapy so you have to inject you have to withdraw the uh, 10 ml of blood from the affected animal and same blood you have to inject intramuscularly and due to uh, that injection of their own blood there is increase in the igm antibody it has been there and uh, there is a development of immunity it has been occur and this treatment it has been repeated at uh, at the interval of 5 to 7 days because after 5 uh, days there is a reduction in the igm antibody in the blood circulation it is there so to enhance that immunity we have to again inject after uh, seven days period so within four to six doses of case we have given the four doses of the uh, this own, their own blood and you can very well uh, see there is a reduction in the lesions and uh, in this uh, last photograph you can see there is a complete regression of the lesions of the what it is there uh, last case it is the leucoderma so nowadays a nutritional deficiency diseases we are facing at the field level so leucoderma it is one of the nutritional deficiency disease uh, which are frequently found in the buffalo due to the deficiency of the copper and there is a patchy pigment depigmentation or uh, graying of the hairs uh, especially uh, local localized mm -hmm. lesions or generalized type of lesions we can see uh, so in this buffalo you can see at the ventral abdomen there is a bright type of lesions are there in this buffalo there is a uh, patchy or uh, diffuse type of lesions you can see so here also this uh, posterior uh, part of the body of buffalo it is affected one so buffalo they are mostly affected one due to the copper deficiency so this is the buffalo uh, in which you can see there is a <clears throat> total depigmentation of the hair it is there so due to the destruction of melanocyte or deficiency of copper such type of symptoms uh, we can see and uh, there is no any harm to the animal it is there but whatever the market price of such animal it has been reduced one so such animal they are having um, uh, problem due to the economical uh, importance so economical importance it is very much in case of the copper deficiency so in this buffalo uh, we have uh, treated this buffalo with the help of this uh, injection multimineral uh, that is uh, uh, injections which are containing copper cobalt selenium and uh, and zinc and that uh, injection it is given 10 ml a dose it is there for large animal and it is given at weekly uh, this multi mineral injection it is available in the market in different trade name and near about uh, within a uh, 4 hour 6 doses so it depends upon the immunity or uh, different uh, condition of the animal so uh, according it can uh, result it can be vary according to the different cases and uh, after a, a one month period you can see there is a disappearance of the uh, this uh, or there is a blackish coloration uh, to the skin uh, in this buffalo we have seen only there is a small uh, whitish patches we can see on the lateral side of the abdomen after one month period and uh, along with the multi mineral injection we have given the chelated mineral mixture because chelated mineral mixture at the dose rate of 25 to 30 g Uh, twice in a day uh, for a period of one to uh, two month it is essential one and uh, here you can see there is a uh, classical improvement after a two month period so generally in case of leucoderma uh, near about one and a half to two month period it is required uh, for the uh, normal skin or there is a uh, regrowth of the hair and color coat of the animal it is there so in a simple uh, simply by giving multi mineral and chelated mineral mixture we can uh, successfully uh, uh, this uh, recover such type of cases in the buffalo so lastly i want to conclude my uh, webinar uh, with a take home message that is clinical examination and differential diagnosis at field level it is most important one because at field level we are not having any sophisticated lab 
and uh, also uh, some um, uh, laboratory facilities they are very less one so in that case proper clinical examination of animal and you have to rule out the differential diagnosis so once you have to confirm the disease then you, are, you you can come to a conclusion for a proper and a specific treatment for a particular specific disease and whenever you are diagnosing such a cases at field level in that case prompt diagnosis uh, treatment treatment it is necessary one so most of the time at field level we are treating for one hour two days and again there is no any uh, uh, follow up it is there so most of the time we are not knowing whether that case it is improved one or there is a, any recurrence of the case it is there so for our uh, uh, treatment protocol we have to take the follow up of the cases so most of the cases in this presentation uh, i have uh, treated uh, during this covid 19 pandemic so in, during this last two years uh, 80% cases i have treated in this uh, uh, presentation and i have taken a proper follow up uh, with the animal uh, owner or with the help of any student or your colleagues you can take the follow up and videos and pictures so you can come to a, a proper uh, recovery in uh, such cases and uh, whenever necessary uh, use of alternative therapy, therapy you can apply to reduce the cost of treatment or uh, allopathic treatment so uh, <clears throat> so this is a thank you one and all so thank you alembic pharmaceutical uh, for giving this opportunity and all the participants for uh, listening me uh, for this webinar thank you madam thank you very much uh, ma'am your presentation was uh, no it was self explanatory uh, very few very means uh, very few questions has been asked only uh, hardly three to four questions are there uh, i would like to share those questions with you uh, i will be sharing the questions ma'am yes sir yes sir please sir Shall I read out, sir? Okay. Ma'am, ah, uh, I'll read it for you, ma'am. Um, first question was asked by Dr. R. B. Pandit. It was asked in context of actinomycosis. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to get the confirmation of dose rate of sodium iodide. Uh, I think that you had already mentioned in the sheet. Yes, it is seventy milligram per kg body weight by intravenous route. It is not given orally. Only by intravenous route it is recommended. Or uh, roughly one gram per twelve kg body weight we can also give. And it is only given for one time. Sodium iodide it is only given given for one time. And if necessary after a period of two to three weeks it can be repeated. Otherwise there is no any need for the repetition. Uh, other side this potassium iodide we can give daily for a period of 5 to 7 days so there is a repetition of treatment for one week it is necessary while in sodium iodide single or one treatment uh, it is necessary one thank you ma'am uh, second question was asked by krishna murthy uh, can vitamin e and selenium that is repronol be given through intramuscular so it is a generally recommended subcutaneous uh, vitamin e and selenium subcutaneous uh, route it is recommended or uh, you can uh, directly follow the company instruction so whatever the company it is recommending uh, whether it is given by intravenous or intra uh, sorry intra uh, subcutaneous or intramuscular route uh, that you have to prefer so you have to follow the instruction which is given on the injection so generally it is subcutaneous it is given thank you ma'am and third question was asked by mr navin it was there uh, i couldn't type the because he asked the question in the last so is dextrose in fever can be given so generally it is not given uh, so first you have to give antipyretic drug any antipyretic meloxicam ketoprofen or uh, flumixin meglumin it is uh, uh, it is there you first you have to uh, decrease the body temperature of animal and after that uh, uh, this uh, dextrose or any fluid therapy generally it is recommended can we give steroid also ma'am uh, by uh, this question is also asked by dr jashwant gaur mm -hmm. can we give steroid in fever 
So steroid in sir fever. So, yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. No, generally it is avoided. So generally steroids we are not uh, giving in uh, cases. In very less cases, uh, generally uh, in advance or uh, in uh, in uh, some cases in which we are having very poor type of prognosis, or in case of ketosis, it is generally recommended. So generally steroids they are avoided one and only. Uh, as an event necessary as a, to increase the metabolic rate or to increase the metabolism carbohydrate protein and fat generally it is recommended okay ma'am uh, thank you thank you very much ma'am uh, these were the questions uh, you, asked and uh, uh, yes ma'am these were the questions yes please sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. The session was really, you know, very appreciating session, and uh, everybody must have they must have enjoyed it. So now I would like to give the vote of uh, thanks on behalf of uh, LMB Pharmaceutical and on uh, on behalf of all the attendees. So sir, there you... are some questions are there, sir, in chat box. Uh... Okay, ma'am. Uh, I'll read out the questions. Okay, sir. Okay. In chat, yes, ma'am. Uh, certain questions are there in chat box. Why Ram Manoj Roy in trypanosomiasis, uh, triquine and prosomine both can we give? Uh, the question has been asked by Ram Manoj Roy. So generally, in this trypanosomiasis, uh, glucose level it has been decreased one. So we have to provide the glucose level. So hypertonic saline that is dextrose twenty percent or twenty five percent generally it is recommended one. And specific drug uh, that is triquine, which is containing quinapiramine sulfate uh, and quinapiramine chloride. So sulfate it is uh, generally given in clinical condition. While for a preventive measure, uh, chloride combination triquine uh, generally it is recommended. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Doctor Abhishek Sharma, he has asked, is fusamide safe in pregnancy? So generally, it is uh, not safe in pregnancy because it is osmotic diuretic. Uh, they are uh, taking the water uh, which is uh, accumulated or which is uh, present in the fetal around the fetus uh, of the growing animal. But uh, in case of the, uh, if it is given for longer uh, period of time, then it is a uh, harmful one. But uh, in case of emergency or according to the uh, condition of the patient, uh, we can recommend for one or two days. And uh, in uh, while giving frusamide animal, uh, they should have the normal water intake because dehydration status while giving frusamide it is most important one. And for longer duration, it is generally not recommended. One and two doses uh, in pregnancy according to the disease condition, it is okay one. But generally, it is avoided in the pregnancy. Thank you, ma'am. By Dr. Jashwan God, can babesiosis occur in calf less than ten day old? Ten days old. So, uh, sir, uh, generally babesiosis it can be occur in the uh, young age group of animal. So, generally life cycle of babesia. So, for the uh, proper uh, or for the maturation of this babesia organism. So life cycle of babesia it is most important one. So generally one month of the calf uh, or uh, more than three weeks of old calf they are mostly uh, susceptible to the babesiosis. So mostly ten days old uh, early affected one because life cycle they require their own time uh, for the uh, development. Okay, ma'am. Uh, by uh, Jaiwan Patil, the question is in actinomycosis. Potassium iodide is recommended. Okay, he had uh, replied. Only, only orally. Potassium iodide orally and sodium iodide by intravenous route. Vice versa, it is not recommended. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, I think in chat box, there are no more questions. In q and I will see. Uh, in Q&A box, uh, yeah, by Dr. Limbaji Salve. Uh, the question is, if possible, try to, okay, uh, that has, that is one request, that, that is one request, ma'am, for uh, yes, metabolic sir. disease they want. Uh, Dr. Limbaji Salve, he had made one request. So, ma'am, I think the question and uh, all questions uh, have been covered from the chat box as well as Q&A box. Thank you, sir. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. I am especially thankful to Dr. Shivaraman, sir. So, from his webinar, 
uh, I have learned a lot of things. I know many times I have uh, uh, contacted him uh, in uh, any uh, doubt in diagnosis at field level or any case it is uh, come across. So thank you. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Shivaraman sir. And also I am thankful to Dr. Surbhi ma'am, my friend, uh, who is a, she is an assistant professor at Meerat Veterinary College and she is my good friend. She is an assistant professor in surgery and uh, she has also attended uh, today's webinar. So I am thankful to all the participants also uh, for the uh, listening this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shuraman, sir, for your presence. So, uh, good evening to one and all. What a knowledge enriching session it was. On behalf of LMBIC Pharmaceutical Limited, myself, Dr. Amit Singh, would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Meera P. Sakri, madam, for sharing her practical experience on case discussion of common bovine diseases. Definitely, doctor, 